Laurie Nailward, and this is Cape Ann Report. Our topic is the importance of shopping local, and my guests are Peggy Russell from Pop Gallery on Main Street in Gloucester, mm -hmm. Adam Farber from Mark Adrian Shoes, also on Main Street in Gloucester, and Christian Del Rosario of Safari, also on Main Street in Gloucester. So we're here to talk about retail um, issues and also the importance of local shopping local. So I'm just going to throw it out there to to Peggy first. Um, okay. Why is it important as a retailer on Main Street and retailer in Gloucester uh, that locals shop local? Many reasons, but the most important ones, number one, to get to know your neighbors, number two, to keep the dollars sort of local and, and migrating locally, number three, to get the kind of expert advice that only locals can give, like beyond what's in our stores, what's in your store? Where can I get a bathing suit? Where can I get shoes? I would know that because I know these guys and I'm intimately aware of what the offerings are in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then most importantly, I think also, is the kind of specialized merchandise we all carry. And I think we all do an incredible job, and I speak for other people on the street, that carefully curate and buy for their demographic and know it well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So Adam, what do you think about local shopping locally? I think there are two dynamics at play and they overlap significantly. I mean, it's the shopping local but there's also the small business. You know, we, as small business people, we work harder to help the customer, to help our, our friends in the community more than any big box retailer is going to. So even if the big box retailer is right here, we're still working that much harder. We're curating our selection and we're making sure that we're, we're maintaining the products that the community needs and is looking for. Uh, we support the community, we give back, um, ads in the in the Gloucester High School yearbook and and the plays and Definitely. gift certificates to to events mm -hmm. and fundraisers. Uh, I mean, it's constant. Every 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 week we're doing more and more, and and we love doing it. So, yeah. um, you know, shopping shopping local is is critical, but shopping small also is going to benefit to the consumer. Mm -hmm. We help curate and we make sure that uh, we have the right selection. Mm -hmm. Christian, no, it's great coming into a like a mom and pop store. You know, your locals place on the street you know we have a really unique kind of you know we're a surf shop we're kind of like a little niche kind of thing on Main Street here but it's fun to have lots of people come in not just our shop to everyone's shops and see all the different things that everyone provides because everyone has their own little niche here that totally. we each provide different little things right. um, that's not like you go to a mall there's everything there <laughs> there's so much sometimes there's too much there mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we're here, you know, Gloucester here in Rockport and Cape Ann, Manchester. You know, people don't want to go over the bridge. You know, right. they want to right. stay on the island. And people come in and tell us we want to shop local. They want to support your businesses, which is nice because yeah. to have these recurring customers that keep on coming in and coming in. And, Completely. And you can take care of them. You, know, you see them year after year. Yeah. You know, you see people here that are here year round. And we have people here now. The summer people are coming back. So you see yeah. those people that you haven't seen since like last August or September. It's like seeing an old friend. It's nice to see all these people come in. And, Absolutely. You know, so you are doing a specialty shop. I mean, the surf shop yeah. sells wetsuits, and um, and Mark Adrian, of course, is all shoes of like really high quality. All the stores are really high quality. Yeah. And then and then Pop Gallery is, you know, clothing and designer clothing, and you have all we sorts of amazing out. things. When we first started, we were sort of doing a very specific kind of art and design thing, and our prices were a little bit higher. And over time, it became apparent to me that my demographic needed a little more variety and particularly in price points. So I work really hard to honor that and a lot of city folks and tourists will come in and be like, your prices are great. I've seen similar things where these lines in New York or Boston are everywhere and they're marked way up. Um, case in point, some of the catalogs, you know, like Sundance, for example. Yo, they really, really mark things up. And so you're also getting, like Christian said, and, and um, Adam said, this specialized attention. I special order things for people all the time. They'll come in, they're an odd size, or they saw something. They want to see, since I carry that line, if I can get something I don't have on the rack, I'll do my homework. And I, you know, we call people up all the time and, you know, special order. We also, and I don't know if you guys do this, so I'm guessing you do. Um, at Safari, but we do a custom, we do two or three custom lines in store that are designed by the people that work there, self-included, a line called Camp, and then another whole line called Pop Merch, which is 
customized with imagery for the locals and then 01930 or the latitude and longitude of Gloucester on it. Um, so we do a lot of stuff and then those people can order for their rowing team and we'll customize designs for them. So, you know, back to the point is this is really the kind of hands-on, you know, catering well, that yeah, we Well, yeah, it's kind of like what we all really want when we're going shopping. Mm -hmm. And the retail experience has changed so much with malls and big box stores. And do you think Main Streets have been forgotten? Do you think our Main Street and Gloucester's forgotten by, by locals or even like tourists? I think we're in a unique position. I think the Main Street in Gloucester is stronger than most in this country. Um, you know, we've been, we've been there for almost 45 years since my father opened. Um, and even growing up, I, I see major differences and major changes. The tourist industry has really escalated that. Um, and, and, but we've also, again, back to why it's important to be a small business, we're really nimble. So over the last yeah. several years, uh, you know, our styles in, in my store have changed dramatically. You know, we're much more on the cutting edge of fashion, though we stay really dedicated to our comfort core. Um, we won't be beat on price, so you're not going to get a better price online or in a big box mm -hmm. retailer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're able to make those changes based on what we see the customer is looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I joke, I'm, I'm part of this, um, this Next Gen Cape Ann group. It's, it's, a, it's a group, it's sort of an offshoot of the, of the Chamber of Commerce, um, young professionals on Cape Ann. And every time we get together, um, everyone gives a little, you know, what do you, what's your business? And I, I joke, if you haven't been in my store since you were eight years old, <laughs> come in. It's, it's different. Time. And that's true of the entire of Main Street. Totally. And, and it's strong. It's right. thriving. There are some empty spots that need to yeah. be addressed, but it's, it's really strong. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think the empty stores and the storefronts, the empty, some of the buildings really uh, on Main Street is a deterrent to folks coming downtown? And are you feeling... Uh, are you getting a hit on that economically or in sales at all, Peggy? Um, one thing I can say is oftentimes we get passed over for Rockport because the buzz on Bearskin Neck or a lot of tourists come up here, they've heard about the shopping on Bearskin mm -hmm. Neck, they've heard about Rockport, and they've really just stumbled on us. And one of the things that's brought business down, I think, thankfully, has been the block parties and the ladies' night and men's night shopping events. So we become a bar, a social club, an entertainment source and all these other things. Um, I know Rockport does those things too, but I think Gloucester really does need to keep a vibrant and lively year round because honestly, Rockport isn't year round as much. No offense to those Rockport stores <laughs> right, who right. I love and church <laughs> that are year round, but there's fewer of them. And I don't yeah, know. and all I three of your them. stores are year round. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, how, how, how so, uh, you know, Adam, talk about the, the, um, element of empty storefronts and year-round business and so forth. I, I can't speak directly to the empty storefronts. It's a, it's a challenge. Yeah. I, I don't have any analytics that tell me it's, that it's directly hurt my business. It certainly uh, would be better and more vibrant on Main Street if they were full, but I think the majority of spaces are full, and mm -hmm. I don't think it's really keeping people from coming downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's true year-round. I mean, I'm in a fortunate position where, you know, shoes are seasonal. You know, I'm carrying boots in the fall and the winter, and I'm carrying sandals in the summer and the spring. That's challenging to keep up with from an inventory perspective, oh, yeah. but it keeps my business vibrant all year round. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting, you know, in late August when the new boots are coming in, my customers can come in again and check out what's, what's new and what's fashionable for this, mm -hmm. for this fall. Uh, and then again, next March, it's all over again in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're busier in the summer. I, I, I joke that um, we live in... Where we live, I don't have any time to spend in the most perfect time of year. So, right, because you're working. You know, totally. it's, it's sad. I, I wish I could be with my family more in the summer, but that's you know we need yeah. to we need to make it happen in the summer. Right. Um, but in the fall and the winter, we still we have regular regular traffic. It's very rare that we have a day that just is, you know, worthless. Yeah, Christian, because you're down on the East End. Mm -hmm. Whereas Mark, Adrian, and Pop are more on the West End, so mm -hmm. that's a different a different retail environment, honestly. Definitely, it's another, you've got a different atmosphere happening down there. It's almost another little world over there. Yeah, I call it over the hump. But um, what's you know, your experience? We do have some empty storefronts there. You know, I'm the, kind of like the young young gun in the group here, since I've only been here about five years. Where these guys have been there a lot longer. But um, you know, we have a couple of big Camerons. You know, we have. 
Pizza Hut across the street, I mean, Papa Jeans, excuse me, across the street, which are now empty. Um, you know, I don't think they deter traffic. You know, they're kind of maybe eyesores, but, you know, it'd be nice to have a vibe, more vibrant community down there with more stores or restaurants or whatever that would just drive traffic. You know, if you have more stores, people are more likely to shop there. You know, I, we had a shop in Manchester for seven years. The traffic down there is definitely a lot slower, especially when you get into the kind of off season or the winter months. It slows way, 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 way down. Because um, there's just not the diversity of shopping and restaurants there. You know, you, if you're going to go to a destination, a spot where you're going to go shopping, like like you said about going to Bearskin Neck in Rockport yeah. in the summer, they have a ton of shops there and people are focused on that. They want to go where there's a lot of shopping so they can walk around and right. see the restaurant, go to restaurants and eat, go to different shops, see different things, go to the galleries. You know, like when we had our store in Manchester, there's not much going on. And in the winter, there's even less going on. But, you know, here in Gloucester, it's a lot busier. You know, it's a main street. There's all these shops at their end, there's shops at my end, and restaurants, and there's always people, there's always foot traffic. Right. You so ended up closing your shop in yeah, Manchester. Yeah, we ended up closing there because it was slower. Right. Be slower because the, the Gloucester was a better year location round, year round. Much better location year round yeah. here than it was there. Yeah. But so, um, Peggy, talk a little bit about your idea of uh, locals being a tourist in yeah. your hometown because I really like that idea. I'm and make I, a t-shirt. I'm and, pretty convinced. And honestly, <laughs> you know, I'm always saying that to myself, you know, you got to yeah. be, you, it's, you often have to have visitors over and then you play tourists and that is a good, a good yeah. way to do it. And, uh, but what about that, that process in your mind? How do you get people to play tourists in their own town? Well, by encouraging them, we literally are better concierges than the hotels are. I mean, every one of us can provide the best restaurant and the menu down to like who offers what, where's the best lobster roll and you know, and 12 different other bits of information. Um, but playing tourist in your own town is really fun on the day off. Check out the stores and restaurants you haven't had time for. Go to the Cape Ann Museum. When was the last time you checked that out? It's amazing. And then the other thing is I would love to be, you know, going to some of these other stores too because I also kind of want to check out not the competition per se, but I want to make sure that I'm not overlapping and that I can also tell people I always shoes Mark Adrian, bathing suits and, you know, surf stuff, obviously safari, and that goes on for the whole rest. But tourists generally bring me information too, and so it's really nice to reciprocate. You know, they'll tell me about a whale watch that I didn't know or about, you know, what they just saw and, you know, information they just in learned. In some other store. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's important. When I lived in Boston, same thing. It was embarrassing how little I knew about the Freedom Trail until I, you know, <laughs> but, you know, it's just a great, and this is such a vibrant town with so much history. So I've learned a ton by just, again, gun calling around and in the off season. Yeah. How do you all work together? Is there, you know, is there a way that you collaborate on some of these issues like the storefronts or driving um, more locals downtown or signage or working with the city? You know, is there, is there a way that you work together to get some of these issues or challenges addressed? Well, uh, you know, officially there's organizations in place that help bring us together. The Gloucester Downtown Association is mm -hmm. great for Main Street, runs the Sidewalk Bazaar every year and does lots of other th events. Um, the Chamber of Commerce does the block parties and, right. and really does a great job of, uh, of supporting us and, and getting us to talk to each other. Um, but then unofficially we, we work together. You know, we, mm -hmm. we're referring to each other all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always sending customers to Larson's if they have a shoe that I don't have. I mean, it's not yeah. competition. We're all in it together. Yeah. I was, there was a funny story last year. Last summer, a customer came in. She was looking for a pair of shoes for her daughter's wedding. And she was trying on a dress at Pop Gallery. And she wanted, was trying to figure out, does the shoe match the dress? So I said, here are the shoes. Go down <laughs> the Pop Gallery and try everything on together. Right and on. she did. She bought the dress, she bought the shoes, and she looks spectacular for the wedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fantastic. Christian? I mean... How are like, you communicating with other you know, retailers? And you know, you just got to go out and walk the streets. You know, unfortunately, sure. being business owners and having a busy season, you know, we're in our shops all the time and working. Yeah. You're like, the last thing you do, oh, maybe I'll walk down Main Street. Or maybe I'll go home to bed. I'm so tired. <laughs> 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 I've been working every, I've worked 14 days in a row. Um, right, because you're small, you have a little bit of staff, yeah. I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, we do yeah. have a little bit of staff, but you know, sometimes you got to be in your store. Right. Because you yeah. be. you're the one that knows everything. You, know, you don't have, right. everyone has the same knowledge as you or know, hey, uh, there's an older three-year-old size 
medium wetsuit that I have that's I can give you a discount on because you're a local <laughs> kid and right. you know my staff's not gonna be able to pull that out you know have a right. rabbit out of a hat that way right. so you know I, I kind of feel that I have to be there but yeah. you know I'd like to get down and visit everyone's stores yeah. more because yeah you can refer you know, like I can say hey oh, mm -hmm. you know where you say hey the best lobster rolls down here or you mm -hmm. know I like to go to this place or I like to go to a hotel because the view is spectacular to have a drink at the bar there yeah. or you know, go to this store for this thing or this store for that. You know, if you know what stores have, you're able to refer better. Mm -hmm. and tell people like, you know, I don't sell that kind of stuff, <coughs> but you know, I know a store that does. Mm -hmm. And this is where you should go. So there's been a lot of uh, development in Gloucester and Gloucester Crossing is adding more of uh, the big box stores. Um, and uh, although they're set apart from downtown, they're at the entrance. And um, there's also online shopping. So I'd like to hear from the three of you as local retailers, how online, you know, how, what an impact that has on you. I mean, do you feel it or it, you must obviously yeah, think yeah. about it. And lots of us shop <laughs> online when we want something. It's easier to just go to the computer and order it on Amazon and get it in two days, honestly. Um, and shopping is more of like an experience and uh, something that can be just wonderfully relaxing and uh, some time off, um, or it can be busy uh, going in and running into the shoe store to get shoes for a wedding <laughs> or something like that. Um, but could you give me your thoughts on online shopping as retailers? I actually disagree with you about it being easier. I'm sorry. Really? No, 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 no. Go. pick it up, go, pick it up. You go. Yes, it may be easier to buy toilet paper online and yeah. have it delivered to your front door. But if you're looking for that right piece of jewelry mm -hmm. or you're looking for that right pair of shoes, online can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. We've done that curation. We know the products. We can help you. I, I will fit you two shoes. I will customize the fit mm -hmm. as needed. Mm -hmm. uh, we can help you with orthotic insoles. We can work with you from a style perspective and colors. You know, we you can, can provide. Special order, we probably. can absolutely special order. Special we can order. we can provide the services uh, that you just you can't simply can't yeah. get online. Exactly. Um, you know, there are reviews and there's you know, yeah. instant gratification. It, and you, and <laughs> that, that was my other point. You don't have to wait two days. You right, get it you could today. Just get it and you can carry right. out your bag. You can carry it out today. Yeah. You know, we're in all co very competitive on price. You we can try it on yeah. so that you know it looks good on you. I mean, how many yeah. times have you stood in line at the post office and seen people? going back to return the thing they ordered because right. the reviews online of clothing ex and shoes yes. and, sur and, and wetsuits are exceedingly fitted things, you know. They yeah. need to look good. You need to know how you feel in them. And so that experience can't be replicated online. And I don't care how many reviews somebody else made. Those are very personal purchases. And sometimes you're not saving a lot of money. Now you've added time by having to return them, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, what a hassle. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's convenience to it, but absolutely what you said about just the speciality of it. I mean, I went on a trip to Morocco in February and brought things back that there's no way you're going to find online. These tiny little artisans in some country made them. So, you know, there is always a place. I buy electronics and things like I need online, too. But um, for personalized purchases, like all of us provide, I think absolutely. The, the industry standard in terms of return rate uh, in store is about f under five percent. Online is about forty yeah. percent. So the fail rate when people buy shoes online, and I'm sure it's true of clothing mm -hmm. um, and, and specialty products, yep. it, it's you're just much better off. Let's let's keep it local. We all benefit. You get better customer service. You get a better product. You get it right the first time, and you're going to pay the same as online in most cases. One other thing is the amount of packaging. So oh, I'm God. really, really getting conscientious. Um, we encourage people to bring their own bags now too. Thank God for Gloucester Outlying Plastic. But I mean, the amount of carbon imprint to order online, the trucks driving around, the UPS, and the, returns. the amount of packaging, the returns, the plastic, the cardboard, all that stuff mm -hmm. is another thing. So if you are conscientious about that stuff, Go downtown. You walked there probably, or a lot of us that live nearby walked there. I mean, just that's a whole nother conversation. So, mm -hmm. uh, do you, do you think that Roger Street? Um, do you think more people drive down Roger Street and don't know that Main Street is even there? Do you think that that's an issue in, in the city? There might be a few. You know, if you don't want to get, I mean, there is traffic on Main Street, and some people will bypass it. Mm -hmm. 
and we get that issue we were just talking about before where people said, how long have you been here? You, you guys knew? And, <laughs> oh, you've been here 20 years. What are you <laughs> no, talking <exactly>. about? Exactly. <laughs> you know, I've only been here five, but some of these guys have been here a long time. And, right. you know, people are, are like incredulous, like, how long have you been here? Right. You know, we're here. How We've did I here. miss right. you? I've been here for five right. years, and, right. you know, we sell all this stuff. Come on in, you know, and yep. see yep. what we have. See what the rest of Main Street has. There's That's a lot right. of stuff here. Right. Well, I, lo I love Rogers Street, and, and because I think an elephant in the room is parking. Yeah. Uh, it's always an issue. And staying open late. That's another thing. Right. So yeah. that's something to talk about. But, yeah, let's, but, well, but so let's talk about parking. parking. Uh, every day customers are coming in saying, I couldn't find parking, it was so hard, or I had to come back. Um, the studies have been done, and there is plenty of parking There's in like downtown. There's like 2,200 spaces there are, There downtown? is plenty of parking in downtown. Wow. There, you know, uh, but I direct customers, if they didn't find a spot on Main Street, Rogers Street is literally one block away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. there is plenty of metered parking And there's there. free parking in yeah. some places. And, and there's, and there's and some free parking. 10-hour parking down um, there. So, yeah. I, you know, I think it's an overblown concern, but I think the communication needs to be improved about where the parking options are. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, any of us, if, if I have an elderly customer, someone can drop them off. I'll help them into the store, go yep. park, and then come back. Yep. It's okay. Oh, I give and so, so many quarters out for meters. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. Not, it's know, free another quarters, benefit of a, of drinks, a local, whatever. So a concern about downtown shopping and local shopping is parking, but I think mm -hmm. it needn't be as much of a concern as, yeah. as some people think it is. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And the other issue? Staying open late. So the staying open late thing is is come up again because it is a, so it's a, a big summer thing is naturally. Yeah. It's later, later, and people mm -hmm. are, Gun calling around. I mean, I and they're grew out up, there going out to going dinner, to restaurants after the beach, and absolutely. Yeah. And so, it, you know, we would like to, you know, try to get everybody on the same page. It's difficult to do. However, like for example, I grew up in Provincetown in the summer times. That was what you did. You went shopping at night, yeah. and mm -hmm. you hung out, and the streets were lively. And then you went to a drag show, or if you're with your parents, you went, you know, whatever. But um, <laughs> whatever. The point is, is that it really is vibrant at night. And a lot of tourists come in and are like, geez, they roll up the carpets early here. And I'm like, we're open. I don't know what. But again, that could be a conversation that more retailers could have about, mm -hmm. especially not just for block parties and stuff to be open later. But it is in the summertime. It's a capital time to capitalize on the extra foot traffic. So a right. couple and, extra and, hours. And Christian, you spend a lot of time in Nantucket, mm -hmm. and of course those those shops are open late. They're open like nine, ten o'clock, but yeah. some of them yeah. they have to be. It's in their, you know, their lease. They have to yeah, be open that late. Least. But it is. The downtown's vibrant down there. You go down there at nine, ten o'clock at night. So the whole family's rolling through. Right. You know, they go yeah. to restaurants cream, and bars yeah. and ice cream and all yeah. the shopping, all the stores, because yeah. all the stores are open. Yeah. You know, we're on. Like I said, the other side of the hump from where you guys are, where there are more mm -hmm. restaurants down where you guys are. So, you know, if I live, where, if our store's down at that end, we definitely stay open later. And we yeah. have tried to stay open later where we are, but it's just so slow where we are. I know. And we chose our spot because of better parking. Yeah. <laughs> Easier I mean, parking. Right. And But at night, we kind of slow way down. You know, we'll stay open sometimes on weekends later. And it's true in our end, too. And this has been ongoing conversation. You know, I try to push it, and people will be like, oh, I stopped by, and your hours said to I'm like, I sat there for three hours, and nobody came in, obviously. You know, I don't. Yeah. So it's a really, but anyway, it's a conversation to continue having. Right. Um, where the restaurants could also, like, kind of help us with that, too, I think. So mm -hmm. um, we should all keep talking about that, particularly in the summer. And because I, I, those Block party nights are fantastic. I mean, and I, damn, right. you should come up and set up a little We're booth. We're on the other side Seriously. of the so we don't see that traffic. It's hard. You Bring know, a tent have to dig a tent down and a booth know, down, but like, the other side, like, it's a ghost town where we are because it all stops at Pleasant Street. I know. That's too yeah. bad because. I wonder if the more of you got together Why can't we have women's and stayed night up in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> women's night or men's night in the summer. I know Tourist that there's. night. <laughs> yeah. tour, right. Right. Because it's so vibrant in the yeah, hall at true. the holidays. As yeah. you know, staying open late and having those great Thursday evening, um, you know, shopping events, to have something that's different during the summertime, especially open late. Yeah. Um, and coastal towns, and a lot mm -hmm. of them do that. Yeah. Yeah. That that would certainly be fun. So, any other issues that you want to talk about um, that impact you uh, as retailers? Um, we talked about parking. We talked about staying open late. Are there other things? We didn't really talk about signage or improvement of signage, but are there other issues that you find in your spaces that you wish were better or different or 
Well, we were talking earlier about um, leases and keeping yeah. real estate affordable for retailers so mm -hmm. that it doesn't all just become office spaces or realty agencies. And I saw that happen when I lived in the South End. I'm a Boston South End person in you know, the SOA district, which is now the hip happening art scene. Trust me, it wasn't 1986 when I started there. But, um, and then we saw a slow turning of like more real estate agents and, you know, chain stores and chain, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, Starbucks moving in and or um, Whole Foods and all that stuff. So that was another. So we really want to keep the, the, eclectic and eccentric in Gloucester, you know, the kind of unique and funky demographic-based retailing going on and um, yeah, so and urging urging the city and the uh, real, uh, excuse me, the um, landlords to work accordingly, to be gentle and to realize mm -hmm. that we're all in it together and better to have your place rented for maybe a few hundred dollars less than you listed it for if it sat there empty and and then to keep those window displays going, keep something right. there so that it doesn't, you know, it deters crime. And yeah. other other cities and towns have taken empty storefronts and allowed artists to come in right. and you know put up a, an installation um, or not not a pop up shop, but just an installation so it's a vibrant something to look at in, mm -hmm. in the window. Do you think that would be something that? Especially in, a, uh, in an art town. I think that'd, like be, that'd, that'd town. be fantastic. Right. Or the pop-up shops would be great. Right. I mean, there's one that just went into the where, where Pisces yeah. was. There's mm -hmm. a shop right. that's going to be there for a few months, mm -hmm. and it's great. And hopefully longer. Hopefully, you know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the restaurants are such a draw, also, and I, I think we. And the food is. We'd great. be remiss if we don't mention the restaurants uh, as being a reason to stay local. Um, it's world-class food that that these guys and, and girls are. Are putting out it's you know and and we want to support them and we send customers to them all oh, the time God, yes and they draw towards us so yep. staying open late because people are out for dinner yep. or opening on Sundays because people are out for brunch yeah I it's mean great. the girls at sugar mags and <laughs> Willow rest and mm -hmm. Tono and the Franklin and all that are all my customers too so when I go in there it's also nice to be recognized there and Yes, I sometimes do get a free drink as a result of having given someone a delightful <laughs> discount so you know it works both ways it's right. reciprocal and yeah, so that's important. Yeah, that's great. Well, Peggy Russell, Adam Farber, and Christian Del Rosio, Rosario. <laughs> Tried. <laughs> Thank you for being on Cape Man Report. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thanks for tuning in. Check us out on social media. And until the next time on Cape Man Report, I'm Maureen Aylward. Take care.